Yellowstone supervolcano hit by 73 earthquakes. Is this a sign of an eruption? The USGS Yellowstone Observatory has told us to look for certain signs. They are monitoring the earthquakes, the gas emissions, the deformation. They have tilt meters for the deformation and they have the seismographs for the earthquakes. They also are monitoring the temperature changes and also they're monitoring the increase in gravity in certain areas which means that the magma is building up, creating more gravity, which means that there's more magma underneath. And did we mention the gas emissions? Now, this is by Sean Martin, Express UK. The Yellowstone volcano is rocked by a series of tremors, earthquakes, and some believe that the earthquakes could be a sign that the caldera of the supervolcano could be about to rupture, to blow, to explode. In the past 28 days, the Yellowstone area in Wyoming has been hit by 73 earthquakes. Well, actually, it's not 73 earthquakes. It's about 730, I would say, because there's a, a smaller number reported than are recorded. Now, if you take the area around the caldera, not just the caldera, but the area is about 20, 30 miles around. That is uh, a tremendous amount of earthquakes. And when you take into consideration the areas around the new hot spots, the new thermal areas, which are also shaking, uh, it's never stopping. Now, all of these tremors have been re relatively small, with the largest one at about 2.6 on the Richter scale that happened April, uh, 2.6 is a magnitude. Uh, on, it happened on April 29th. Of course, we did have, the beginning of April, the 5 magnitude, which was downgraded to a 4.4, but the USGS never e even touched that. They never, ever referred to that. That was around just a little bit uh, at the corner of the uh, Wyoming border with Montana and Idaho, right there, and they never referred to that. Previously, they had a, an earthquake of that magnitude about 35 years ago, and they were all flustered and stressed as to what it could mean. And uh, this time they didn't refer to it whatsoever in their, their Caldera Chronicles that come out every week, where they explain the occurrences of the past week. So, in the start of this month of May, the tremors have become slightly more frequent than the April tremors, with 10 of these earthquakes hitting since Monday alone. This according to monitoring from the USGS. And despite the quakes being relatively small, God forbid if they were bigger, the experts, the experts warned that it is not necessarily about the strength of the earthquake around the volcano, but more of the quantity of these earthquakes. So the more quakes they have, the more unsettling the area is, and the more pensive the uh, and skeptical the geologists are as to what the, all this could mean because it's an uptick in earthquake frequency. Portland State University geology professor Emeritus Scott Burns said a spate of small tremors around a volcano, a volcano usually signifies that magma and gases beneath the surface are beginning to navigate their exit. It's also something else that we see. We see sometimes seasonal changes in the, uh, for example, the water underneath the earth as it, we have heavy rains or we have snow melt, and that gives an increase in the water in, uh, that is, uh, has seeped into the ground and uh, gives um, a deformation to the earth because of the, uh, the earth acting as a sponge for the water. 
so that is, I just wanted to mention that that's one of the things that we do see cyclically taking place in Yellowstone. But these f more frequent earthquakes, as from uh, what the geologists explain, are a worrisome sign. It's one of the signs that have, they have to look out for. Now, Burns said, if you get swarms under a working volcano, which we have here, we've had earthquake swarms even in Yellowstone Lake, and the lake, as we know, sits right on top of the roof of the Yellowstone magma chamber. Even the waves of the lake, they say, can create uh, earthquakes. The size of the, uh, the, of the water waves of the lake lapping on to each other and swinging the water around is dangerous enough to create earthquakes and that would be of course dangerous for the roof of the magma chamber cracking. Can you imagine that? That's unbelievably astonishing. Now he says if you get swarms under a working volcano the working hypothesis is that magma is moving up underneath there. However, others, other geologists disagree about whether an earthquake swarm near a volcano could be a sign of things to come. Jamie Farrell at the University of Utah in Salt Lake City believes this is just part of the natural cycle for what's going on at Yellowstone Supervolcano. And in other words, he means everything is normal, don't worry. He says earthquake swarms are fairly common in Yellowstone. There is no indication that this swarm is related to magma moving through the shallow crust. Well, I guess you'd have to somehow prove it with more evidence uh, that magma is moving through the crust. Now, the upturn in quakes, the uptick in quakes, has also been accompanied by a sudden eruption of the ledge geyser, which is another of the Norris geyser basin geysers. The other one is the biggest one in the world, which is steamboat geyser. That can go up to about 600 feet. Uh, the ledge geyser is also a very, very noisy and loud geyser because it comes up through a very tiny hole. And uh, for that reason, it uh, makes a lot of noise when it comes up, like a pressure cooker. When you have the pressure cooker really heating up, it whistles and it makes noise when the water and the steam, when the steam comes out. That's the same thing with Ledger Geyser. It's at the side of the um, opening and it's a very small opening and that's why you have to shout and yell at each other when you're near it in order to hear each other. That's how loud it is. Now the Ledge Geyser is in the Norris Geyser Basin. That basin has been deforming and rising while the caldera, uh, the rest of the caldera has been sinking. And we saw that last March, steamboat geysers started erupting, and it started erupt it erupted about an average of one week, once a week. Uh, it erupted over 30 times last year and about 14 times this year. And now we have another geyser, a second geyser in Norris Geyser Basin, the Ledge Geyser, which is the second largest in the Nor Norris Geyser Basin and has not shown any activity for three years before it erupted uh, just a few days ago, April 28th. So that's another sign of uh, things that have uh, become, uh, that have come out of the ordinary. The fact that Norris Geyser Basin is really blowing itself, blowing up, steam-wise. Uh, eyewitnesses described the eruption on Geyser Times. They said, observed in steam phase, main red vent, in heavy roaring steam that was heard from the parking lot, having to yell to talk to each other. Geysers like those at Yellowstone erupt whenever water and steam get trapped in a tight spot be between uh, the geysers' blowholes, deep below the geysers' blowholes. The mix of water and the steam builds the pressure until it finds a way to the surface, where a tall stream of scorching hot water blasts hundreds of feet into the sky. Now, the geologists continue to analyze the activity of these geysers. They want to ascertain if any sort of impending eruption is installed for Yellowstone. Now, if this Wyoming supervolcano were to erupt, that means that an estimated 87,000 people 
would be uh, victims of this eruption immediately, and two-thirds of the United States would immediately be made uninhabitable. We're talking about a super eruption. But there have been minor eruptions after the last eruption that was 70,000 years ago. These minor eruptions still do local damage. Uh, they are, uh, from what Lowenstein, the, um, the head geologist for Yellowstone, described in his lecture at Menlo Park a few years ago, Yellowstone, he believes, is overdue 10,000 years for an eruption. Now, the large spew of ash into the atmosphere would block out the sunlight and directly affect life beneath it by creating, with the, with the volcanic ash, this kind of volcanic winter, nuclear winter, uh, which has happened quite a few times in the past from volcanic eruptions. The massive eruption could be uh, 6,000 times as powerful as Mount St. Helens volcano that erupted in 1980 and deposited ash in 11 different states and five Canadian provinces. Now, if Yellowstone does erupt, that would mean that we would have a tremendous climate shift. And as the volcano would spew massive amounts of sulfur dioxide besides the volcanic ash going worldwide, the sulfur dioxide spewed into the atmosphere can form a sulfur aerosol that reflects and absorbs sunlight, besides being poisonous, like an acid, onto us, onto animals, onto any plant life, which is um, it falls onto, burning it like an acid. So it's not at all pleasant. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.